guys, it's Matt here with MP Power Sports, and today we are doing the part two of the KX250 restoration slash rebuild. Last video in part one, we had the vapor blast in the cases, stripping down the bearings and all that. So today, we're basically putting the bottom end together. We're getting the case kissed. That includes of installing the transmission bearings, main bearings, seals, installing the crankshaft, and then we also have to swap over the transmission shaft. The bearings and everything's fine, but the teeth of the sprocket actually hold on to right there. It's supposed to be this thick, but it got cut down, so the front sprocket has a lot of play. And that's just going to get worse and worse until it just starts spinning. So we're replacing this shaft. We already got the rest of the parts, vapor blast, the carb, kick start, gear shifter, rear brake, mounts, the head, cylinder itself, power valve assembly. So that's all clean. We still have a small few other pieces, but for the most part, we're looking good. So how I like to do bottom ends, kind of have everything organized. In the middle, I have the crank. To the left side is where the flywheel goes on. And the right side is where the primary gear goes on. Our right main bearing, our left main bearing. On top of that, we have the crank seals for either side, left and right. This is the right side crank case, this is the left side crank case. We have the transmission bearings on the right, transmission bearings on the left. Some bikes have a gasket for the cases. This bike does not, so we're gonna have to make our own. Here, and you do the process right, you're gonna have no leaks. And we'll go through that process shortly. We have the cases ready. The right side casing is flat on the other side for the most part. So you can just do it on a piece of wood workbench. The left side is not flat. So you either A, need to make some contraption to where it sits flat, because when you're pressing the bearings in, you don't want it going cockeyed. So what I found out for most left side cases, the small wheel adapter for a Tusk tire stand actually works out perfect. If not, you can use something else like a wooden block or something to support that, as long as it's for the most part flat. Today we're gonna show you with the hammer and socket, as long as you take your time, and don't get ahead of yourself, and don't hit it like bam bam, you should be fine. That's a little bit of how I get everything set up for a bottom end. Without further ado, we're gonna get the transmission bearings in. Let's get ahead and do that. We're gonna start with the left side casing. So we're gonna get the left bearings here. So we're gonna take this over. This is important. These bearings are directional. They have a small lip on the top. This needs to be facing in because the top needs to be sitting here because if you look here, there were brackets holding them in. The brackets have to sit flush on here with the casing. So that's what that lip is for. If it's the other way, it's, gonna, it's not gonna fit correctly. First things first, we're gonna get a little bit of grease. Just put around the outer race of this bearing. You don't need to go crazy. You just wanna get a small, even coat, just like that, so you can see some red. We have some clean rags. We'll lay that out here. So we're gonna get our torch. You wanna apply a little bit of heat. You don't wanna go crazy. Just enough to where it'll warm it up. <laughs> Want to grab the bearing, slide it in as best you can with your fingers first. Now, when you're seating in the bearings, you want to get it evenly. So you want to, especially with the socket, be smooth with it and you want to take your time. If it gets in cockeyed, you can crack the casing, you can ruin your bearing. You don't want to do that. So take your time to make sure that it's sitting down smoothly. Just little taps. Okay, so we ran into our first problem. I thought the tire stand thing was going to work. Again, it works for most cases. Did not work for this Cowie, so we just used some wood to stabilize it. Back to where we were at. Hear that? That clink means that you are seated the case. I always like to double make sure that we are pressed in by hearing that again on the other side. So this is where we got the clink. Let's go down here. That also has that high pitch clink. Trust me, you will know when it's seated. It's from like a hollow sound to a metal on metal sound. If you want to check, you can go from the back side and see that there is no gap. That's all good, and remember, that's why we need that lip, because now the bracket is going to be flush on this bearing. After it's all done, I like to spin it around to make sure that everything spins freely. No binding, no clicking, making sure that everything's good. This one was installed perfectly. We're going to move on to this one, which is for the main transmission shaft. This one is the one with the metal bracket on the back side of it, right here. There's the metal bracket. That faces to the outside. So if this is the inside of the casing, this faces the outside. Same thing with this bearing. It's got that lip there. It goes like that because we have a bracket right there that has to fit flush with the casing. So that's why they have that little lip. Gonna get some grease. Get on the outer race, just to where it's a little bit of red. Set that down on the clean rag. Grab the torch. Just a little bit of heat. Grab this again, drop this in. Back to the socket and hammer. 
You want to get this on straight. Hear that? Dude. We are metal on metal. Now we have our transmission bearings installed on left side casing. We're going to install the small needle bearing for the shift drum, and then we're going to do the main, and then we're all set for the left side. We have the needle bearing. Oops, good catch, bad butter fingers. Nobody saw that. The same thing, just get a little bit of grease on it. There's no retainer, there's no bracket, anything holding this in. This is just strictly press fitted in. Get the torch, a little bit of heat. Your needle bearing, pop it in. Push in as much as you can with your hands. So when you're pressing the other bearings in, you, you don't want to have all the pressure on the inner race or the balls itself, you'll ruin your bearings. I don't know if you saw from the videos, I'm half on both, but I want that pressure on the outside race. Since this one, there is no inner race and outer race because it's a needle bearing, you just wanna go straight on and make sure you're pressing it evenly, not you know cockeyed. Quick taps first. See where we're at. And you can see it's starting to go in smoothly. There we go. Metal to metal. Now this is a little weird, I can't show you, but I'm feeling to make sure that the needles are spinning freely, which they are. Now we have all of our transmission components. Shift drum, bearing, with the main transmission shaft bearing and the counter shaft bearing. Those are all press fitted in. So now we're gonna move to the main bearing and the seal. Now we're moving on to the main bearings and seal. Some bikes you can install the seal after the bearing. Some you have to do the seal before the bearing. On this bike, we have to install the seal before the bearing. Otherwise, we won't be able to install the seal. Let me show you what I mean. If we put the bearing in right there, let's just imagine that's press fitted in. Seal cannot fit. And you can't press it from the outside because there's a retainer on the back that holds the seal in place. So, we have to do the seal first. Just get the race tech grease. Put it on the outside, you don't need to go crazy, crazy. Press in there as much as you can with your, oh, you don't, you don't want that to happen. You don't want it to go cockeyed. You want to press in as much as you can with your fingers and then you want to grab a socket, flip it around just to where it's on the inside, just like that where it fits good. And I don't like using the metal hammer for that. I use a two pound dead blow, which makes it hit a little bit easier. Just little taps is all you need to do to slowly slide the seal in. Take it off, make sure you're going on even. I am pretty sure that is seated. Let's check on the back side. I want to do one more hit on this side. It looks like there's a small gap. That is right here. So we're gonna put this stressing on that side. And one, two, three, and we should be good. There we go. No gap, pressed all the way around. Seal's good, it's flush. Now we are good to move on to the main bearings. Since we press the seal in first, we just wanna make sure, three, nothing like that, wipe it out. Be clean when you work on stuff. Time for the main bearing, and this is gonna be a little bit different because normally we heat up the race. We cannot heat this one up because there's a seal there. If we heat up the seal, we ruin the seal. So we just have to take our time when we press it. It's gonna take a little bit more time. Just take your time, you don't wanna ruin the main bearing. Because Then the build you did, you're gonna ruin it. Everything else is still the same. Apply a little bit of grease, thin layer. Now these bearings are a little easier to get cockeyed because they're a lot bigger. So you really want to make sure that you're going in smoothly and evenly. Still smooth. Still even. Waiting for that clink sound. That's it, right there. Check on this side. There we go. Our main bearing is seated. You'll know if your bearing isn't fully seated on all sides, if it's catching or if it's binding, but if it's moving smoothly just like this, you know you're seated in there. And so we're gonna wipe off the excess grease. There we go. Now that's all our bottom end bearings on the left side casing with the seal is installed. So far looking good, right Tyler? I would say so. We're gonna put this one aside. The right side is gonna basically be the same exact steps. The only difference on the right side on the main transmission shaft you install that from the outside of the casing because you can see the retainer. And the only other difference about this one is this is a collar and then there's a needle bearing that slides through here. So we'll show you all that right now. Forgot, now is a good point to grab your crank. Right now is a good point to put in the freezer. Again, we only let it sit for about 30 minutes. You don't need more than that. The crank is in the freezer, so we're back to this.
Christ, Kawasaki. Double bag in it. I can rebuild an engine. I can't take a bearing out of a bag. This is directional. Remember, this has to be facing in. Inside. This way. <laughs> just figure it out. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when I talk, I have a brain fart, so you guys just gotta, like, read between the lines when I speak, all right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm moving a little too fast for our cameraman. It's all good. I gotta speed up. It's my job. Oh, we were running out of, <laughs> out of <laughs> gas. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, I got a spare torch in the garage. Look at this. He's a cameraman. Spare torch. I forgot we're doing quick clips on this. <laughs> oh. Mm. <laughs> Pretty sure that went all the way in. Yeah. A lot of times with the um, shift drum, these bearings are, they slide in super easy. That's why they also do have uh, brackets that are going to be holding this in. Too small. Just right. There we go. It's right there. We wait to install this when we install the transmission. This goes on the counter shaft and then that fits or feeds right onto it. So we can't install this just yet. All of our transmission bearings, all the bottom end bearings are installed. All we have to do is put the brackets on for each of them, rebuild the transmission, set the crank in here, touch the kisses, call it a... <laughs> yeah, kiss the cases is what I was meant to say. Touch the kisses. Touch the kisses. Kiss the cases and we'll call it a day. I'm gonna swap over these cases real quick. So now we're putting the brackets on to hold the transmission bearings in. What you want to do is get the brackets, lay them just like that. Get the other one, lay that one just like that. And get the third, lay them just like that. Kawasaki, when they assembled it, they had red Loctite. I'm going to clean that off. You can throw red, but for the next guy that wants to tear this, part, this engine apart, it's going to be a pain to crack them loose. There's red Loctite, which is basically permanent high strength. And then there's blue, which is low strength, but it still has a good hold. What they made is an orange color thread lock, which is right in between. That's what we're going to use for these ones. If some bike has a manual that spe specifies that it wants blue or red, we do those. Again, you don't need to go crazy with this thing. You just need to get a little bit on there. There. Just like that. You don't need to go crazy. Just get it to where it's tight, the thread lock will hold it in place. Clean the leftover thread lock off the threads so you can apply a new thread lock. Brackets are on, thread locked in. Left side casing is done, so we're gonna set this aside and move to the right side casing. Now the right side casing, since they're sockets, we can get a socket on there. We're gonna stay away from this orange now. We're gonna go back to blue. All right, same thing, except these aren't brackets. They're just bolts with washers on them. On to the next one. So now we're gonna flip it over, do this side. We are good. All transmission bearings are good to go. Everything's looking nice. Yeah. We're going to go upstairs, get our transmission shaft, and we're going to go swap that over. Look at all of them! I went through four! I'm about to go through five. I swear, if there's it's one like, more... It's like those dumb Christmas gifts you get where I you know, think you're getting some massive... Box. Yep. Well, at least I see it, but it's still another bag. Hey, eye on the price. It's right there. Right here, we made it. Alright, so, the shaft is good, the gears are not. They're a little chipped. On the edges, back dogs look good. We want back dogs of the gear to be straight, otherwise it'll start skipping. We're gonna have to swap over this shaft with these gears. Get ahead and do that. When doing transmission, you wanna lay it out exactly how you take it off. A little nice O-ring there, let's note of that. We're gonna take this gear off and we're gonna do it just how this is coming off right there. It will come off both ways as you see this is sliding. This came off like this, so we're gonna place it like that. Then we're gonna place that like that. These are down here. So this goes here, then this goes there on the bottom, then this on top, and this on top, and this is in the middle. The only thing holding this in, there's a bearing in here, 
and there's a little C-clip right there. So that C-clip, we have to remove to get this gear to push down this side. It won't go up this side. Pull that off. We're gonna take that off. Then we're going to drop this right there. Drop this down right there. And now we're stuck with our shaft. They're basically the same exact thing right now. This gear is not terrible, but this one's better condition. So we are gonna swap this over to this shaft. We're gonna get our snap ring pliers, which are right here. Get in the groove, just like that. Widen it just ever so slightly. Let's see if a better attachment helps us out. And this one is a little tight, so it's gonna give us a little bit of difficulty. So once it gets there, you can just pull it up. That clip is out. This will fall down just like that. See how we have it laid out from top to bottom. O-ring. This gear goes on top, then this one. Sandwiching with this gear, C-clip holding this gear in, then this gear, then this gear. If you get confused or you forget the order, you can very well just look up on the diagram on Rocky Mountain ATV, the OEM diagram, and it'll help you. And there we go, easy peasy, comes right off. So we just swap everything over, move this over there, put this on here, just like that. We're gonna use whichever snap ring is in better condition. This one is. It's a lot easier to put on than taking it off. You widen a little bit, push it down until you clip into place, just like that. We're clipped, we're in the groove. This gear is not going anywhere. Start from the bottom. And this slides just like there. And then this. And there we go. So now we have bad shaft here. You can see the groove there. Now we have good one. This is what it should look like. Nice and rectangle shape. Not cut out like that. It's not gonna have any play within the front sprocket. Now the transmission's good. One thing I wanna do since we took it all apart is we're just gonna drizzle some oil on it, get it all lubed up while it's apart, and then when we put it in the case, we should be good to go. Inspecting everything is working as they should. Now again, we're going to grease it. Use any 10W40 or 10W50 oil. You're going to want to get the oil of that fixed gear in there where it slides straight onto the shaft itself. You're going to want in between the dogs and the other gears. You don't need to go crazy because again, we're going to do break-in oil too. And we're going to be changing the oil after the heat cycles. You just want to get a little bit so it spins smooth. I don't know if you guys heard it before, but it didn't move this smooth. Now everything is nice and fluid, ready to be installed along with the crank. Without further ado, let's start setting everything up. First, we're going to want to get the transmission and then we're going to go with the crank. Before we put the transmission in, we're going to do the same thing. Just going to get a little oil on the bearings. You can use assembly lube. You can just use regular old oil. As long as you're lubing everything, so on the first startup, you have some lubrication so it's not metal on metal. You don't ruin any of the internals. Now we are going to grab the transmission and the left side casing. So it's going to go like this. The clutch goes there and the sprocket goes on that side. So we're going to put it in that way. Before we do that though, just wipe any dirt off and dust on the shaft. It's going to go like this going in. Sprocket side in, clutch side out. So sometimes it's a little bit of a pain getting these in to where they sit flush because you have to push them in together um, without the gears you know, falling all over the place. Just take your time, don't force it. If you have to redo it, redo it. There we go. Again, you don't want to force it. You want to kind of let it drop into the place. See where you're missing up, see what's catching, see what's binding. A friend of mine actually, the first time he was doing a bottom end, he put the transmission in and he was like, hey Matt, it's getting stuck. It's catching, it's binding. Why is that happening? Is my transmission broken? What happened? No, your transmission is not set up fully yet. Your transmission, to, to be able to roll freely, it needs to have the shift forks in. Shift forks, what they do is they lift and lower the gears, which is actually what happens when you're changing the gears. So right now it's not set in the place it's supposed to, so it's binding. It turns and then stops. It happens with every transmission. Once we get the shift forks in, and they're all set in a place, and all the gears are in the place where they have to be, it's gonna spin freely. Now it is the shift fork and shift drum time. Same thing, oil everything, you know, get go crazy with it, you know? I'm gonna grease it a little bit first, and then I wanna set it up. Sometimes there's a left and a right L or an R on the shift fork itself to show you 
in which direction or which order these go in, whether they're on the left side of the casing or the right side of the casing or the center. Kawasaki does not have one. It's easy, at least for the main transmission shaft, because there's only one fork. And the dowel pin that connects to the shift drum itself obviously has to be facing the shift drum. If you have it like this, it doesn't do anything because the shift drum is going to be spinning and this is not going to do anything. You have to have it like this. I get the shift fork. I will lift this from the back, this gear right there, and I'll put this in, slide it in, slide over to the side, just like that. I don't put the pin in just yet. I put it as much as to the side as I can to get as much room so I can get this shift drum in. So now, same thing with the dial pins here. These have to be facing to the right. So again, we're gonna take the pin out, just like this. We're gonna do the bottom one first. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna lift this. I'm gonna go from the back, if I can fit my finger in there. Just like that. So that clink, was it locking into place? We're gonna push that out to the side again so we have room for the shift drum. And then we're gonna do the same with the upper shift fork. This one's very easy because we have it right here. It's up right there. That goes right in there. Now we have the transmission set up. We have the shift forks in. We have the, obviously the transmission in. Last thing we gotta do is just drop this in and get them in their proper grooves. So on the Kawasaki ones, we have them sharing a groove. There's only two groups. Some shift drums, there's three grooves. There's only two here. So when this is in, these two are gonna be sharing the bottom. You wanna lift up again, and get that right into there. Once that's in the track, you line that up, then you put the pin in. Our main transmission shaft is fully installed. Now we need to do the same to the counter shaft. Obviously, since the bottom shift fork is on the bottom, we're gonna to wanna to get that in the groove first and then move our way up to the top. We're going to lift up and that goes right there on the bottom rail. And this, we're gonna lift up and put that right onto the top rail. Once that's lined up, make sure the pin is good, nice oiled, and slowly just feed it in. Now our transmission is fully set up, and look at this. It is spinning freely as it should. This is how you know you have everything set up, your transmission is good, no binding. We're gonna go upstairs to the freezer, grab that crank, and it should drop right into the left side casing. Crank is cold, not too, too cold. Right now, we're gonna be very super, super, super careful heating that in a race. We really don't want to do anything, we just want it a little bit warm. We're gonna grab the crank, remember that's the left side of the crankcase, so it goes in this way, flywheel goes there. All right, that did not work. I, did not be, I was not able to heat it up enough. Ran into a small issue. You don't want to mess up with heating up the bearing race, so sometimes it's not gonna drop all the way through. I don't want to risk heating it up and ruin the seal because it's just not worth it. So what you do is you grab a tusk crank puller tool. Basically all it does is it goes on the opposite end and pulls the crank through the bearing. It's gonna get the same result. As you step over the five bags the crank came in. So there's a bunch of different detachments that actually go into the crank itself right here. And well, first shot. I normally don't do that. This goes facing this way. And this just goes on just like that until it bottoms out. Then you grab this thing and you screw it on to the outer thing. That is how you are attaching the tool to the crank itself. On some cases, there are metal things in the way that you don't want this being in contact with. They have attachments that go on the case. Uh, they have two rods that go here to act as support so you don't ruin your casing from pressing it in. This one seems just about right where we can just compress onto that one itself. And that's what we're gonna do. So you hold that, and then you just tighten this bolt. We're tightened down, we just need to tighten that bolt. And you'll see, as I'm tightening this down, see the crank pulling in? It's nice and slow. So now when you get close to pressed all the way in, be careful because you'll feel it tighten up, and that means you're pressed all the way in, right there. And remove the whole thing, and there you go. Your crank is pressed into the main bearing. The biggest thing is patience with motors. If you try rushing something or you try forcing something, you're gonna end up ruining something, nine times out of 10. So now this is how I test it. It should be spinning freely. Crank is balanced perfectly. It's popping up, I'm barely pulling up, I'm just pushing down, and it's coming up itself. Crank is good, bearings are mint, and it's pressed all the way perfectly. So now the next step to do, we're gonna clean the surface of the crankcase. We're gonna apply some gasket maker. We're gonna let that dry for about a couple minutes, put the crankcase on, and uh, we should be good to go. Right now, we're just cleaning the crankcase because obviously from insulation, we have oil, grease, gunk, stuff we don't really want on there. Whenever you're doing gasket maker, you want a clean surface for it to mate against. If not, there's a risk of it not mating, and then you have a small leak. 
and I doubt any of you are going to want to put your case together to find out you have a leak, to then find out you have to tear it back apart just for something stupid as gasket maker. Clean the surfaces just like this, make sure it's good, and then you're ready to apply your gasket maker. You want just a thin coat, you don't need to go crazy. This isn't going to be a clean job with gasket maker, but when it dries, you can peel the excess gasket maker off of the casing. It went a little heavy this time. <laughs> Gasket maker's on there. It sat for a little bit, so we're good with that. You're probably looking at, hey Matt, you kind of went crazy with the gasket maker. Yes, I did. Um, the gasket maker we have right now, the nozzle we have, it, there's a bunch of different sizes and I cut it a little bit too wide, so there's a little bit too much gasket. It's not a problem at all. We clean any of the ones that went inside and even if they didn't go inside, it would be burnt off. And if it doesn't get burnt off, we change our oil after the heat cycle. So we're not worried about that at all. Anything that I got stuck on the outside from when it gets compressed and gets squeezed out between the cases, you can rip off once it's dry. If you go overboard with it, you're just gonna make a mess, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Now this is all set. We're gonna prep this case over here. Same thing, you want a clean mating surface. Wipe any of the, any dust, any dirt you see, because once you put it together, you're not going to take it apart. Now once that's clean, our last thing, again, this is only for this Kawasaki, is it has that needle bearing that just slides on right here. You're gonna put that on, that fits in the collar and the right side casing. You're gonna grab the right side casing. And this is gonna be a little tricky because the case itself is a little tilted down because it's not fully bolted on because it can't be because this case isn't on. So we need to hold this up while dropping this on, making sure that everything is aligned. It's gonna get caught on a couple things and then it's gonna drop. Little rockers. Again, you don't wanna force anything. There we go. And now it's gonna start getting caught on the crank. Before that, we wanna make sure that everything's still in the grooves. So everything is lining up. Now the right side casing is not just dropping on smoothly because the crank needs to be pressed into the bearing on the right side. Some old Kawasaki, they have a C-clip holding the primary gear on. The only issue with that is Tuss makes another attachment for the crank puller to pull it from the right side. Ours actually just broke. Of course, we have terrible luck with that. Normally, I would never advise using this, but since everything's fresh and the crank is cold, we should be able to lightly tap it on. You do not want to bang anything on. You can be careful with this. You can knock your crank out of balance. So be very careful with this. Don't do this unless it's going very smoothly. I don't even advise to do this. Should just be dropping right on, which it is. And you want to just go evenly, no big taps. If you have to, if you're hitting like that, there's a risk of making your crank go out of balance. Light taps is not gonna hurt it. So slowly go down. Similar to the bearings. Similar to the bearings. Just little, little, little taps. And there we go. Now we have our cases together. Let's do one quick test. And there we go. The crank is spinning freely. And that's a sign that you did everything correctly. If the crank is not spinning freely and it's binding or it's getting caught, that means that it's not seated in one of the bearings all the way. So that shows that either A, you made a mistake, B, you ruined your crank, or C, you didn't fully install the crank bearings, or D, you ruined the crank bearings. Now with crankcase bolts, <clears throat> one quick thing. Sometimes, actually most times, they're all different sizes and lengths. On this Cowie, they actually made it pretty cool, and they're all the same length, so you don't have to worry about mismatching them. But the rule of thumb is they should all be sticking out the same length when they're not threaded in. So let's say you had one longer or something, if one's poking out all the way up here, then that's not the right place. You wanna just get it threaded in evenly. You're, not, you're just getting it until it has a little bit of pressure, just like that, we're not torquing anything down. This holds the carburetor lines, so we want this up. So we just got these bolts just over finger tight. Now we're gonna get our torque wrench and torque it down to spec. All right, so we're gonna get it to spec. Bean. 7.5. Okay, so when you're torquing these down, refer to your service manual, but if you don't have that, the rule of thumb is you wanna to torque down the center ones first. What that's gonna do is torque down the crank so they're pressing together. So we're gonna do the first inside ones on the ignition side. Once it clicks, you know you are at your designated spec. There we go, that was right at spec. And then from there on, you're gonna to wanna to do cross pattern hard because it's a whole case, but you wanna do almost cross pattern for the rest of the bolts. So we're gonna start up here. There you go. And we're gonna move down here. There we go. And we're gonna move up here. Once that's all said and done, you wanna just double make sure that all your bolts are torqued. Sometimes it's easy to 
overlook one, miss one, etc. So we're just gonna do that all the way around, starting at the front. Good, 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 good. I'm gonna stop saying good. Good, bueno. I don't know any other languages. <laughs> and then you move your way to the inside. Good, bueno. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is almost step by step of how to complete your bottom end rebuild. Once again, I cannot wait to see what this engine is gonna turn like. I cannot wait to hear this bike start up. If you guys have any questions of more in-depth process of what I did, if I didn't do enough detail, let me know, comment, DM me on Instagram. Let me know what you think of the video. Part three is coming out. Without further ado, we'll see you next time.